here in Seoul. Um, we've had a wonderful time visiting your city, a small amount of your city. Um, it's so fantastic to come to this conference and just hear uh, the developments that you are working on and be part of that. So we, we really do appreciate that. Um, my name is uh, Yvonne Walker. I'm here to talk to you today about the organisation that myself and my colleagues are associated with, which is Computing at School, and how Computing at School is supporting teacher computer science education in the UK by building teacher-led communities and practice. Um, a little bit about me in that I worked in the science industry for quite a few years before I actually reached to become a, an elementary teacher. Um, I then became an ICT teacher trainer at regional level and now I work for Computing at School. And my title is a, a Computing at School Hub Champion, but I'll explain a bit more about that later on. So, what is Computing at School? Well, we describe ourselves as a grassroots organisation uh, whose energy, creativity and leadership comes from its members. So basically we do receive some funding from the Department for Education, which does um, actually fund a part of our organisation, but most of our funding comes from IT partners, um, which means most of our members are volunteers, and we, we can support teachers through a bottom-up model rather than a majority top-down model, if that makes any sense. Um, we have our chair, the chair of CAN, Simon Peyton Jones, he's but most often in repeated phrases, there is no them, there is only us, which means we try to work very much together as a community to support each other on learning computer science. And I'm hoping to unpick that a little bit better for you so you can understand how we're actually uh, working together. So, who are our members? On this graph you can actually see uh, the membership of our online community and um, you'll see it's changed a little bit um, since about 2012. We've actually uh, shot up to nearly 20,000 members of our online community. Um, the membership is open to anyone who is interested in computing in education apart from students. We really do not want students in our community. There are other places for students to go and that would, we, would, we really believe that that would put teachers off joining the community if they felt that students were in there as well. So um, we do go, um, as part of joining the, the uh, online community, we, we do validate that teachers are teachers and IT professionals are IT professionals so we, are, we know who our members are. Um, so most of our members are um, just support counts through their own goodwill. They're not paid for members, they're working for the good of the community in their own free time. Okay, so a little bit just drilling down into what that actually looks like. The overall membership composition of CAS, as you can see, is largely composed of teachers, no great surprises there. Um, but we do have a large number of IT partners, um, so they can be like Google, Microsoft lots of other software companies um, and we also have a lot of um, a growing number of uh, FE and HE um, our universities which um, my colleague Sue will be talking about a little more in more detail later are a, a massive part of the CAS community and a really really important part okay again drilling down so here we're looking at the teacher population within the CAS community so you can see we have um, <coughs> ages 4 to 11, primary school, 3,149, um, secondary teachers, 2,100, and um, FE, we've got the 715. So that's kind of the makeup at the moment. Constantly changing, though, very dyna dynamic population. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about um, computing experience aims. Uh, we've got three main aims, and um, the first one being that computing becomes firmly established in all primary and secondary schools as a foundational subject alongside mathematics and science subjects. We really think that's where it should be positioned. There are a number of things that I'm not going to go into in great detail because um, both Miles and Neil covered that really well, 
But all the reports that came out in uh, around 2012, which was a uh, shut down or restart from the Royal Society, took a look at ICT education at that point and what was going on in schools. And to be fair, it wasn't really working that well. Pupils weren't choosing computer science because they'd gone through an ICT education that wasn't fit for, for purpose. Um, so that report kind of challenged what was actually going on in schools at that point. The other, the other thing that really um, sort of made us think about what are we doing here was uh, a man called Richard Riley, who's American, who actually said, what is our education for? And he said, education should prepare young people for jobs that do not yet exist using technologies that have not yet been invented to solve problems of which we are not yet aware. And as our chair says, how do we do that? So, CAS has got these aims, which is about trying to do that thing, prepare children for their future, which we don't yet understand what that future is. So in terms of the second aim, we're looking at the teachers. And we want teachers of computing to be confident, enthusiastic, and increasingly well qualified. And we have now changed the curriculum. We have the computing curriculum in place. We are now putting through our community practice certain things in place in order to make sure that our teachers can, can get to that point. They're not there yet, some of them are. Um, and we've got a growing number of master teachers who support other teachers through our network of excellence. But, so we're, we're kind of developing all of these processes through our community practice to ensure that teachers can become confident and enthusiastic teachers of computer science. And that's not least, obviously, the students. I mean, what do we want from the students, for the students? Well, we want them to develop excellent computational thinking and um, skills and be able to apply that in other, stu in other studies. So be able to apply that in maths, be able to apply that in science be able to apply that in design and technology. And it doesn't matter, and I've heard that from another, through a lot of the presentations, it, it, that is irrespective of whether they are going to choose to go into computer science as their, their future work area of work. The, the picture you're looking at, which you've seen uh, a few times, is from the Barefoot uh, Computing resource, that is a CAD resource, um, that we use a lot with primary school teachers in order to unpick what computational thinking actually looks like. Okay, so the CAS community, I mean, I've got a high, uh, it shows a, a pyramid here, it's not really, it's a very flat structure. What I'm trying to demonstrate there is CAS Central, which is the core team, is a tiny, tiny team. We only have a very few um, core members of that team. Um, and we work alongside the uh, British Computer Society in order to then support the rest of the community of practice. Um, in September, we will have 10 regional centres that will cover um, the whole of England. So they are, will be based in 10 universities and they will be wor working to support the, the CAS community members in their region. Um, we also have the Network of Excellence, which my colleague Sue is going to be talking uh, more about in her presentation. Um, and, but within the Network of Excellence, we have master teachers, where they're the teachers that are already upskilled in terms of computer science, uh, who are actually sharing that knowledge with other teachers who are not quite as confident as they are. We have many other university partners that are, again, working with the schools around them to make sure those teachers can get that training that they actually need and we also have lead schools, like we heard in the, other present, uh, in the last presentation. Um, and again, their schools that have some expertise in computer science who are working with the schools around them in order to make sure we cascade that knowledge out further. Um, and last but not least, we have the CAS hubs. Um, and these are face-to-face -face meetings for teachers to go to, both primary and secondary. They are free. Um, I'll talk a little bit more um, in a moment. They are run by teachers and they are all voluntary. So basically, um, they are our forward, our front facing um, opportunity for teachers to go and find out about computer science. And they really do want to have that face to face opportunity. Okay, 
So a little bit more about the role of Class Central. That's a very, very small team. You can count them on the fingers of one hand. Um, so what is our major role? Well, it is about inspiring, equipping and supporting schools and teachers. Um, it's about developing a community of professional volunteers and working towards a common goal. That common goal being we want computer science to be taught well in schools. And it's about developing and articulating a vision for the subject of computer science at a national level. So again, we work along the Department for, with the Department for Education to make sure that what we are doing is the right thing for the children's future. The role of CRCs, again, working at regional level. So where CAS Central works at national level, you see that CAS regional centres work at regional level. Their role is to support the master teachers in their area, so providing courses for them and making sure that they've got the opportunity to access venues, all sorts of different things. Um, we want the CRCs to engage with the lead schools in their area um, and make sure that they continue to keep being engaged and can develop themselves. The CRCs will be running CPD events for CAS members in their area and they will be providing meetings and conferences for CAS members. And we, we would like them to produce a newsletter to make sure that the, the CAS members in their region are kept up to date with what's going on. Okay, I'm not going to do a lot on this because I know Steve's going to focus quite a lot on this, but we do have uh, a whole group of master teachers that do receive training through the network of excellence and then they are expected to provide support for other teachers. Um, sometimes those courses are, they can charge for because we want the master teachers to be sustainable. Um, we also, the network of excellence also includes other universities apart from the ones that are actually uh, providing the support at regional level. Um, and we've got school, the lead schools who have an expert in, expertise in computer science and are willing to share that with schools in their areas. Okay, so the role of the network of excellence and the master teachers is basically the teachers to support other teachers. We very much believe in this community of practice where teachers are teaching other teachers. There aren't many people with a lot of expertise out there. Those that have got the expertise, we would like to work with other teachers and share that. And that actually is working extremely well. Um, we like the university to support uh, teachers. They obviously, it's universities that generally support the master teachers and then the master teachers then go back to their networks and support teachers in classrooms. And um, the local face-to-face -face, uh, ongoing low-cost training, that's going on all across the country in different ways. And I'll show you a little bit more about that in a moment. It's a sharing of good practice, which we're really focusing on now. And um, we know what the computing curriculum is, don't always know what that should look and feel like in a primary classroom or in a secondary classroom. So people are experimenting with that. The teacher, uh, Sue will certainly talk a little bit more about that in a moment. We want people to stand up and say how it went in the classroom and how that can be modelled in other people's classrooms. It's about developing professional relationships as well. Um, you know, it's, teachers can be quite isolated and we want those, develop, those professional relationships to, to grow and to develop so we've got this really strong community of practice within our organisation. Um, we are working on the presentation but I'm going to leave Sue to actually talk a little bit more about that and again the teacher educa education action research is something that Sue will cover in a moment. Okay so these, this is my particular passion so if I get into a um, very talkative mode this is because of what I really this is my main area of, uh, of work. Um, our computing at school hubs are voluntary, they're run by teachers in schools. Generally the meetings are after school, one of the twilight session. Um, they're free for the teachers attending. The teachers can say what they actually want, the kind of CPD they want to get when they attend the CAR Hub. They get cups of tea, tea, they get biscuits, they get the opportunity to talk about the problems they've got in their classroom and somebody within that group will hopefully have that answer. If not, we could bring the expertise into that group. So at the minute we've got 164 CAS hubs across the United Kingdom and quite a lot more coming on stream soon. 
we do need more because as you can see we've still got big areas where there aren't any cast hogs so that is my job to go around and persuade schools to become a cast hog and to start working with the community around them okay so again the cast hogs are face-to-face -face network networking with peers so when you, this is a recent launch of the cast hog um, that i went to and the teachers were just so glad to have somewhere to go where they could start to learn about computer science and how they can teach that to their people. Um, so it's an open discussion of shared issues. So the actual people attending can say, I'm really confused about computational thinking. How, where do I go? What resources have I got? So they can kind of get that support within this group. It's about taste of CPD sessions, not full blown CPD courses. So they're not going there for a three hour course. It's after school. You know, teachers in the UK wouldn't do that. So it's little snippets. And if they then want more, um, to learn more about that particular aspect of computer science, there will be courses within the CAS um, events section that they can then actually book into. And it's about share, the sharing of learning and resources. So if somebody says, oh, I've tried this out in my classroom, and you know, the children absolutely loved it, then that other people within the group will take that on board and actually have a go. So this is our uh, online community, so we've got maybe 20,000 members sitting, you know, within this online community. Um, we've got a number of things going on here. The main things are our resources, um, the discussion forums, and I know that was mentioned in one of the other presentations. Because the CAS hubs only meet three times a year, they can actually then use a discussion forum, their own pub discussion forum, to then continue those conversations away from the actual physical meeting itself. And we have events that are advertised through our website. So anybody within the CAS community can book, book into any of the CAS events going on anywhere in the country. We've got news. Um, we've got a, a, a news feed there that continually updates on what's been said in discussion forums, who's uploaded resources. So the information is all there for our members. Our members actually receive an email which will tell them what, what's going on in their area. So, this is um, our resources, which I know Miles did touch on. We have well over 3,000 resources, not created by the CAS Central team. We haven't got the facilities to, or the resource to do that. Basically, all of these resources were created by members, CAS members, and uploaded here and shared freely with other teachers. And when people join our community, that's the first thing they can't believe. Wow, 3,000 resources. I was looking for a scheme of work. There's one I can download and I can try out or I can tweak and, and you know, sort of adopt it in my classroom. There's posters, there's lesson plans, there's just every kind of resource you could possibly think of. Going across from primary to secondary, created by teachers and shared for the rest of the teachers within the CAF community. Now I think that's absolutely fantastic. I've never come across a, an organisation that freely shares the resources so widely as the CAF community. And I think this is one of the really strong points of the CAS community. Okay, <clears throat> we have other resources which again Miles mentioned. These are our resources, CAS Computer at School resources that were funded by some of our partners and the, the Department for Education. So we have the Barefoot, so if you wanted to look at the Barefoot computing, you can actually find that on the internet. It is in English, unfortunately, but uh, the resources are all there for you to have a look at. And then we have the Quick Start Computing, which is for both primary and secondary, again available on the internet and is available free of charge to any teacher that wants to learn about computer science. The therefore is definitely aimed at primary schools, although we have do have some secondary schools that are actually using it um, as well. And it just covers the computer science part of the curriculum, whereas the Quick Start Computing covers the three strands of computer science, digital literacy and IP. Um, I pulled this out, you probably can't see, but I, look, I do, I'm very sad, I look at the forums and see what people are talking about. Um, it's where we learn what, pe what kind of support people need from us. And here, there was a, a teacher asking for help and somebody within the CAS community just stepped in and gave her the answers and provided her with the support. Um, and they weren't a member of the CAS Central team, they were just a member of the CAS community. And that's what we really want within our community teachers supporting other teachers. Okay, 
This is a one page of events. We have all sorts of events going on, some free, some charged for, some online webinars that teachers can just book into in the comfort of their own home. Uh, they're all you know, run by CAS community members and there's, there's a course on more or less every aspect of computing that you could possibly think of. So, computing at school, building teacher-led communities of practice, largely bottom-up model and working. Um, these are all the things that we are trying to actually achieve through our community of practice, stimulate learning, learning about computer science, introduce collaborative processes. We've got teachers working with other teachers, enable dialogue. We've got those conversations going through, going through the, the hubs of face-to-face -face and of to our online community. Capture and diffuse exist, existing knowledge. We do have some experts and we need to make sure that they can share their expertise across the community and that is working. Um, connect people, that's what we're very much into. Building a community so people can work with other people. Provide a shared context. Our shared context is a desire to make sure computer science is taught well in schools so that pupils can benefit. Help to organise people. We are, that's the CAS central role, is organising the rest of the community. Um, and also generate new knowledge, which is part of the research that will be going uh, on moving forward. So, thank you for listening to my presentation. I hope that made some sense. Do you want to take questions after? Or? 네, 그 세션이 끝나고 나서 한꺼번에 저희가 질문을 받도록 하겠습니다. 아, 그, 네,